Next team I want to talk about is the Phoenix Suns, who continue to fly under the radar and maybe the most underrated team in the NBA, which is crazy to say because this team has the second best record in the NBA as a whole, but gets almost no recognition for it. They're a game and a half back of the Utah Jazz, and with Donovan Mitchell's injury, they could easily take over as the best team in the NBA. This team is fantastic, man. 9-1 and one in their last 10. And if you just look plain statistically, it shows how well-rounded this roster is. They are 5th in points per game, scoring 115 points per game on average. 2nd in assists, getting 27.3 assists per game. And 5th in opponents points per game, only allowing 107.8 points per game. I gotta give credit to DeAndre Ayton first, who has been a big reason into their recent surge and them playing so well recently. I think DeAndre Ayton is the biggest X factor in the NBA as a whole. I think there is no bigger X factor than the potential of what DeAndre Ayton could bring to this Phoenix Suns team. Because DeAndre Ayton is a super fascinating player. Because you watch him and he has all the talent in the world, all the physical attributes. But sometimes it just seems like mindset-wise and how they run their offense, he's not always there. He's a guy who is so just physically dominant. He's 6'11", 250 pounds, pure muscle. But a lot of times he it seems like he's settling for these hook shots, fadeaways, and he's just not really dominating like the way he can. But especially in these past uh, like 10 or so games, he has been playing excellent basketball, scoring over 20 a game, getting over 10 boards, and it's just been so impactful for this team. He's obviously such a skilled player around the basket. His footwork is impeccable, and I love when he is just trying to be a more aggressive around the basket. I still think that's a place that he has room to grow on. And it's more comes from the fact, not even just shot wise, because I think he takes a good amount of shots around the basket. It more comes from the type of shots. I want him to be more physically assertive and dominant around the basket because for someone as big as him and someone who spends as much time uh, around the hoop as he does, he only gets 2.7 free throws a game. I think that is the one thing that could really unlock DeAndre Ayton as a player. And if he can do that come playoff time and if he can be locked in i think the phoenix suns could make the nba finals i think he is that big of an x factor for the nba as a whole because he is so much better on the defensive side of the ball than he's been in previous years he's quietly becoming one of the better defensive centers in the nba which i would have never expected coming into his uh, rookie year. I was expecting him to be an elite offensive force and hopefully come to one day being an average defender. But no, he's legitimately becoming very, very good on the defensive side of the ball. He moves his feet super well. He's using his physical tools around the basket. Being a guy who doesn't even get that many blocks, he only gets 1.1 blocks a game. But the thing about him is more how he just affects shots around the basket. He's always doing a good job of contesting and never making it easy for the other team, which is super important. He's a guy who boxes out super well, and that allows the other team to not really get many offensive rebounds. That's a big part of defense as well, is limiting the extra possessions the other team will get. Uh, overall, DeAndre Ayton has been playing real well recently, and that is such a big X factor for how good the Phoenix Suns could potentially be because I think the rest of this roster is pretty legit. It's just all about their third guy, being as good as he can be. I think it's inside DeAndre Ayton to someday being like a 25 and 12 guy. I don't think that's right now, but I think he could be a consistent 20 and 10 if he just sets his mind to it and if he just stays aggressive. So hopefully uh, what he's done recently uh, keeps up because that just makes this Western Conference playoff so much more interesting and so much more dynamic because that Phoenix Suns team is going to get so much better depending on how good DeAndre Ayton could be because you have Chris Paul alongside him, the ultimate pick and roll partner and the ultimate winner in this league. The Chris Paul effect is such a real and big thing. This guy just improves whatever team he goes to so much. Now, I do think Chris Paul uh, wasn't like isn't 
uh, the biggest part of this team being so much more successful than last year. I think they were on the right trajectory. I just think Chris Paul was that final piece. And that uh, cannot be understated, the value of that. So even though they went 8-0 in the bubble and stuff and they were on the right track, they were probably going to be better than they were last year this that uh, this year even without Chris Paul I just think he puts everything together mostly coming from his leadership so many guys look at Chris Paul's numbers and they're like oh he's only putting up 16 points a game how good is a guy who can uh, only put up that many points a game really be this guy's a top 20 player in the league I don't care what anyone says he's one of the most impactful leaders in the NBA you can just see it with how he leads this team on a night-to-night basis. He's always talking to Chris Paul, and he's always giving him tips on how to become a better player. That's something Chris Paul is known for, is for his leadership. And even though that can come off a little bit harsh to certain people, just his style of leadership and how aggressive he is, the true greats, a guy like Devin Booker, who is someone who has that mentality that you need, he's someone who... Uh, is inspired a ton by Kobe. Those type of guys are just going to take that leadership and take that advice and allow it to make them such a better player. And obviously, he's one of the highest IQ basketball players this game has ever seen. Such a fantastic playmaker. And again, I think if DeAndre Ayton can get aggressive and be more involved in the offense, that pick and roll could be one of the most deadly things you will see in the NBA uh, with both guards because that is the great thing about this team is that they have two guards who can both close out the game and both run pick and rolls and both be so effective in different ways. Uh, Devin Booker, while being a very good playmaker, for the most part, when he's coming off a screen, he's going to look to score, and that causes the defense to bring him a ton of, of attention because he is one of the best scorers in the league, and then he'll kick it out to another guy, and they got such good, reliable shooters on this roster that they're likely to hit that shot. Well, Chris Paul's more looking to play and make, and the points will come uh, when they come, but when it's closing minutes, when it's those last couple minutes of a close game, Chris Chris Paul will definitely be willing to close out the game. We've seen that for many years now. D-Book has had such a great year, man. I mean, he's almost averaging 26 points per game, four and a half assists, has been uber efficient all year, uh, 59% true shooting percentage. He's been improved on defense, even if he isn't a great defender. And he's a guy who has uh, closed out multiple games for them and is just such a consistent score. Like, even when Devin Booker isn't going off every game, I can always rely on him for the most part to have a good game. He'll have a dud here or there. I mean, he shot 4-16 against Miami. They were still able to win that game, though. And that is the impressive thing about this team is that they have so many options. So even uh, on the rare game that Devin Booker will struggle, they can still win games. But he put up 23 against Sacramento, 24 against Houston, uh, 27 against Washington, 24 against the Clippers. And these are all on good efficiency as well. I mean, he put up 24 against the Clippers on 13 shots. This is just the type of things that Devin Booker does casually. And he's just one of the most naturally gifted scorers we've seen come into the league for a long, long while. So you've got your mini big three right there. And I think DeAndre Ayton putting it all together could make that a legitimate, like, great big three. But then you look at the role players around them, and it's just such a beautiful fit, man, because they all play off each other so, so well, and they all sacrifice to make each other better players. Mikhail Bridges is an elite role player and one of the best 3 and D guys in the league. The fact that this guy doesn't get all defense recognition or doesn't really get put in that discussion is mind-blowing to me. This guy is one of the best wing defenders in the NBA. He's six six with crazy long arms. He gets put on the best player every single night unless it's like a dominant big man. You see him guard one through four on a regular basis. He'll go from guarding Kawhi one night to Luka the next, to LeBron the next. Like, this is just the type of things that Mikhail Bridges brings to this roster. And he's so improved on the offensive side of the ball as well, being so much of a better shooter than he was in previous years. 4.23s a game and 41% is excellent. He's, he can create for himself occasionally. But on offense, he's mostly going to get catch-and-shoot threes on the wing. He's going to get backdoor cuts, easy buckets in transition. And that's what he uh, brings value to this 
this team in. It's that he understands his role and he plays it to a T. It's not about being the best player. It's being the best player in whatever role your team needs. And that is exactly what Mikhail Bridges does. Potentially the most underrated player in the NBA. Cameron Johnson, another fantastic role player, has the versatility to play both four positions. 6A, very good on the defensive side of the ball. Fantastic three-point shooter as well. Another perfect fit. And so many people were laughing at that pick. Me included, I'll be completely honest. But it makes sense in retrospect because now you're looking at it and you're actually looking at like the long-term vision that this team had. And it makes just the, all the world of sense now because they're getting guys who just make sense next to the other guys they have on this roster. They're not necessarily going for the highest ceiling guys or the guys who have the most potential. They're going for guys who they know will fit their culture, who they know will fit their team, and who they know will fit alongside their best players, which I think is a perfect thing to do because it makes your best players happy and it maximizes their talent. You got Jay Crowder, another guy just like that, Fits in perfectly. Defensive wing. Shooting 39% from three this year. Another perfect player to have alongside. Really good guards. Etwan Moore. A guy who can shoot the ball as well. So many guys on this roster who uh, can shoot, which is very important. Etwan actually isn't shooting that good at all this year. But I do just like what he can bring as a role player. Langston Galloway. A guy who's a proven shooter in this league. And is a really underrated role player. Shooting 45% from three this year. And then you got their best bench piece and one of the more underrated players in the NBA as well which is Dario Saric who has actually played the backup center position this year which has been fascinating to watch because I feel like he's been so misutilized throughout his career and I guess this is what he needed to be used as I thought he was going to be most successful being used as a four who could play make and shoot but it, I guess it's as a center who can play make occasionally, but is being used in a lot of pick and rolls, getting easy buckets at the basket while being able to stretch the floor as well. And he's been super successful in that role. So shout out to him. That's another guy who has adjusted his play style completely to help win this team games. It's just the amount of sacrifices that everybody makes on this roster, which is so honorable because so many guys on this team could probably put a bigger number numbers on a different team but they know that them putting up whatever numbers they do as long as the team is winning basketball that's what matters you have one of the best coaches in the NBA in Monty Williams who I feel like is a fantastic leader for this team and pairing him with Chris Paul I feel like it's just the perfect mix as those two guys work off each other so so well and Chris Paul is that on-court coach that on-court uh, leader while Monty Williams is the guy giving them the game plan and always motivating this team I feel like his rotations are always on point as well I mean it's just such a well-rounded team and they continue to get so underrated man you guys need to stop sleeping on the Suns this team is an NBA finals contender I'll always say this about every team in the west if the Lakers are healthy I'm taking them to make the finals 100 times out of 100 but it's such an open spot for that second team, depending on how healthy the Lakers are. And I think the Suns are right up there. The Jazz are great. The Suns are great as well. The Clippers, the Nuggets, even with their injuries. Like, these are all teams that could compete. And I think any of them uh, could definitely be that second best team. But with the Jamal Murray injury and with me even though the Clippers have been playing really well, it's just hard for me to trust them due to their style of play, due to them always taking so many tough shots, which I don't know how much I can rely on come playoff time. I might have to go with the Phoenix Suns as the second best team in the West just because they are so consistent. The team flows together so well, and there just hasn't been a moment this year where they've looked bad. Like Obviously, teams are up and down, and teams go on their streaks. Like They've been great recently in the past 20 or so games. But just this entire year, they've been really, really good and really consistent. Such a fun team to watch and such a great team, man. 
Phoenix Suns need to get their credit, and that's what I'm doing because they absolutely deserve it. 40 and 15. What a turnaround they had they've had. You got to give credit to all the guys in that front office. They've made so many great moves throughout these past couple of years and have completely turned around what was a disaster of a team to being one of the best teams in the NBA. That's a really, really cool story, and it's been fantastic to see the success of the Phoenix Suns this year.